Hello, in video number 26, I introduced you to some algebraic tricks of the trade for actuaries to help us solve part A of this problem that you see here. This video is going to continue solving parts B and C with yet more algebraic tricks of the trade for actuaries, similar to those in the last video, to help us find values of various financial quantities when given accumulated values of annuities immediate. The problem description is longer than the problem statement itself, which is not too bad looking. There's two parts we're going to do, parts B and C. Let's focus on part B first. If you don't recall what uh, that symbol means, you'll want to watch the last few videos where I go into a little bit more depth than I'm going to hear as far as the meaning of these symbols. I'm going to set x equal to S3n, y equal to Sn, and the goal here is to express v to the n in terms of x, y, and constants. All right, let's solve that first. And again, like the last video, I'm going to solve this two ways to emphasize flexibility in solving things. Um, different ways might be uh, quicker or easier, and so you want to know different ways to solve things. x equals S3n, and y equals Sn. We can use the formula for these future values in terms of i, the effective annual interest rate, if, if time is measured in years. So this would be 1 plus i to the 3n minus 1 divided by i, and this would be 1 plus i to the n minus 1 divided by i. All right, these tricks I'm going to show you are pretty similar to those in the last video, but a little, a little different in what happens. Uh, so the first trick is to take, uh, say, xn divided by y because the i's will cancel. You can write x divided by y is 1 plus i to the 3n minus 1 divided by 1 plus i to the n minus 1, the i's canceled. All right, here's one of the important tricks. What we have up here on top is really the difference of two cubes. In the last video, it was a difference of two squares. Here we have a difference of two cubes, 1 plus i to the n cubed minus 1 cubed. There's a formula for factoring the difference of two cubes. Say a cubed minus b cubed equals a minus b times a squared plus a times b plus b squared. So I can use that identity here with a uh, being, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the role of a being played by 1 plus i to the n and the role of b being played by 1. So let's do that here. Let's factor the top. We would get 1 plus i to the n minus 1 in parentheses times 1 plus i to the 2n plus 1 plus i to the n times 1 plus 1 squared is 1, all divided by what's on the bottom. And it's great. We get some cancellation here. This divides out with this, leaving a 1. All we're left with is this thing equaling x minus y. That is a, that's a quadratic equation in the quantity 1 plus i to the n. If I subtract x over y from both sides, I can write it like this. 1 plus i to the n squared plus 1 plus i to the n plus 1 minus x over y equals 0. Quadratic n, 1 plus i to the n. You can rewrite this by getting a common denominator of y as y minus x over y if you like. We can now use the quadratic formula. Uh, first to solve for 1 plus i to the n, and then take the reciprocal to solve for v to the n because we know that v to the n is 1 plus i to the negative n. It's the reciprocal of 1 plus i to the n. Actually, I think I'll take the reciprocal right away. So what I'm writing down here is what v to the n will equal, and it comes from the quadratic formula except with the numerator and denominator swapped. So it's going to look a little strange because of that. The coefficient of this one is 1, so I get a negative 1. Plus or minus, you can just take the plus square root because if you took the minus one, you'd get a negative answer for v to the n, which is not going to be realistic. So I take the plus square root of 1 squared is 1 minus 4 times 1 times this, 4 times 1 minus times y minus x over y. And the top, it's going to be 2 times 1, just 2. So that is the answer to part A. You could write it in different forms. You could, for example, multiply the top and the bottom by y. 
you know, on a multiple choice exam, it's not clear which form the answer is going to be in, so you should be flexible enough to write this in different ways. Uh, y, at least if y is positive, would be the square root of y squared, and so I can bring a y squared under here. Get a y squared here. One of the y's cancels here. I get a 4y times y minus x, and that can be simplified to 2y over negative y plus square root. Uh, looks like it's going to be 4xy minus 3y squared. So again, all these answers are correct. All right, let me show you next, before I start solve part C, that we could have done part A in a different way with a timeline. And in fact, the timeline approach is what we're going to use for part C. So here's time 0, time 1, time 2, etc., up to time n, say, and then up to time 2n, and then up to time 3n. And we have an annuity of 1 being paid at the end of each period. If we're imagining the, the moment, the present to be time 0, then these are all at the end of the periods. The future value of all three n of those payments evaluated immediately after the last payment at time three n is going to be s three n, the thing that we're calling x. All right, here's what I'm about to say is real key. Really think with me here. Another way to find that future value is to break apart the three n payments into three groups of n. We can find the present, uh, future values of each of those income streams immediately after the last payment, and it equals Sn, which we're calling y. So we get a y there. That's Sn equals y. We get a, a y here, and we get a y here. As long as we push these two payments forward in time to time 3n by multiplying by an appropriate power of 1 plus i, 1 plus i to the n for that one, and times 1 plus i to the 2n for this one, then the sum of those three values of y with promotions in time to time 3n must equal x. So we can write uh, y times 1 plus i to the 2n plus y times 1 plus i to the n plus y equals x. If we now divide everything by x, we can write that as 1 plus i to the 2n, or excuse me, divide everything by y. 1 plus i to the 2n plus 1 plus i to the n plus 1 equals x over y. And this quadratic is really the same thing that we got up here when we set this equal to this. It's the same quadratic. We use this, the quadratic formula again to solve ultimately for v to the n again. Okay, so it's an alternative way to do it. You know, I guess you might say this way was quicker. However, this approach is certainly important for actuaries, and you may want to get plenty of practice with this because it's useful even in situations where you, maybe you can't use the difference of two squares or difference of two cubes, including, I guess, part C. So here's part C. We're given that Sn is 48.99. S sub n minus 2 is 36.34. The goal is to find i. I think a timeline is probably the best approach here. So now we're going up to time n. Let's go ahead and put the n minus 2 in here as well. Then n minus 1, then n. Payments of 1 at the end of each period. The future value immediately after the last payment at time n is going to be Sn, which is 48.99. Maybe you want to pause the video here and write these numbers down. 48.99 is what Sn is. But that could be found in another way. And if we want to relate it to what else we know, Sn minus 2 being 36.34, we should break up the payment stream in the following way. Consider the first n minus 2. The future value immediately after that last payment would be s n minus 2. And this is the 36.34. If I promote that forward in time by two years, 
I need to multiply it by 1 plus i squared. Then if I pr take this one and promote it in time by one year, multiply it by 1 plus i, and then take this one and add them up, I should get 48.99. That's the idea. That's the problem solving uh, idea of equivalence of these ways of getting at that future value for the entire income stream. So I can say that 36.34 times 1 plus i squared plus 1 times 1 plus i, which is just 1 plus i, plus 1 must equal 48.99. It's a quadratic e equation in 1 plus i. I can use the quadratic formula to solve for 1 plus i and then subtract 1 to solve for i. Before I can use the quadratic formula though, I've got to um, subtract 48.99 from both sides. I can write 36.34 times 1 plus i squared plus 1 plus i minus, it's going to be 47.99 equals 0. Now I can use the quadratic formula. You may prefer dividing everything by 36.34 first, but it's not a real big deal. Uh, I could say i ultimately is negative 1 uh, plus what from the quadratic formula? I'd get a negative 1 from this one here, plus or minus, take the plus, square root of this thing squared minus 4 times this times this, which is going to ultimately be plus something here. So we're going to have, again, minus 4 times 4 times 36.34 times negative 47.99, where they get a plus. Just multiply by 47.99. Looks like it gives us a 6,975.8264 inside here. Divided by 2 times that thing. Uh, let's okay. That two times this thing is going to be seventy-two point six eight. All right, let's finish this off here. So I've got to add one to this. Take the square root. Subtract one. Divide by this, and then subtract one from that. And it's good that we took the plus square root there. Looks like i is about 13.5%. 13.55%, and that is the correct answer for part C of this problem. Okay? So, I know it was kind of long, but these are real, real important skills for actuaries, important algebra skills, and so again, I hope you got a lot out of this video.